So let's talk about service workers. So four things, right? What they are, what they do, um, and then how they work, basically. So what is a service worker? I said this earlier. It's a proxy, client-side proxy, that's part of the browser that's controlled by JavaScript. If you don't have it, you go straight to the server. If you do have it, you go through the service worker to the web server. So a service worker, your page could go out and make a request. The service worker intercepts it, says, ah, let me look at the network first. OK. Picks it up from the network, and then puts a copy in cache and comes back to your page. The next time through, the service worker could cut, get the request and go right to the cache and cut out the network. There is a limit on service workers that I mentioned earlier in answering your question, but I'll do it now again for the official video. Um, is that service workers must be served over HTTPS. You cannot serve them insecurely except in two conditions. One is you're running a local host. So it's a, it's a developer hack. The other one is there is, in fact, a Chrome flag that lets you disable it. But that's not something you tell your users how to do. That's, that's for you if you need to test, like, and you don't have HTTPS, but you need to test a different domain. You can use the start flag for it. So one thing a service worker might do is make a decision based on whether I'm online or offline to go either to the server or the cache. Now, in many cases, the many cases what you do is you go to the cache anyway. But there's a navigator.online flag that you can look at to determine where you are. So you could do that. And the nice thing about having a service worker make this decision is it's transparent to the rest of your app. The rest of your app just makes requests normally, and the service worker takes care of the redirection. Is there a size limit for the offline caching? Very popular question. It's like we get asked it all the time. Um, it depends on the browser. Typical storage size is about 50 megs in most browsers. Chrome will give you, last I heard, half of the remaining disk space available. There's a lot of people who experimented and published. You know, They basically keep quick caching things until the browser says no more. Um, so you have to look online because it's constantly changing. It's not an official value from anyone. So service workers can also receive push messages. So since a service worker actually runs independently of your web app, it's a separate piece of code in the background, the browser could receive a push message and wake up your service worker. Your service worker could then go out to the network, grab a bunch of things that it needs, even put them in the cache, and then display the notification on the screen, all without waking up your app. In this case, when the user answers the notification, then your app gets woken up. Service worker lifecycle. OK, so we've talked about what it is. One thing I didn't show you, but I'll just mention it now. It'll be on a slide later, <coughs> is that for every HTTP request that goes through, the service worker gets a fetch event. And it can decide whether to pass that to the network. It can decide whether to ignore it, in which case it passes to the network. Or it can decide to do something with the cache. So service worker lifecycle. When you first start, you don't have a service worker. In your code, you'll create one. That's in the installing state. At the end of this state, the service worker will actually fire an installed event into its own script. And that script can do, start doing work. Usually, that's when you build the cache. Now, it's not yet active. It is not yet controlling your network chain. It won't become active until you make a special call or until the user reloads the app the first time. Now it becomes activated. It's in the control chain. There's an activated event that the service worker gets internally in the script that you can do things like clean up the cache or pick up dynamic data. The service worker, at some point, the browser will say, OK, service worker is idle. It's not doing any work. It's not getting fetch events. So the browser actually has the choice of letting it sit idle, and it'll get a fetch event, process it, and go back to the idle loop, just like the idle loop in the main thread. Or the browser can actually choose to kill the service worker, can terminate it, take it out. Um, the service worker might actually die and restart several times automatically during the life of your app. That's to save memory or save processing power. 
both of which translate to battery on a mobile device. So let's build, let's build some code. This is in my main JS file, so we're not yet in the service worker. First, see if it exists. So if it exists, you'll have navigator.serviceworker, but the better way to test for something like that is always say if the property exists with an in. So if I don't have it, log a bit, just skip out. Normally, you all do a return here. You just bail out. Then, if it exists, call register and give it the path to your script. That returns a promise because it's an async op. It has to go to the disk or the net. So when that's done, you'll get a registration object back. Now, you can retrieve this later right off the service worker, or you can hang on to it. It's used to do things like enable push notifications. For what we're doing today with the cache, you don't need the registration object. <clears throat> I also have an interesting choice here. So the question you asked is, can I exempt certain things, can I keep certain things out of the service worker's attention? Every service worker has a scope of control that it will only accept, it will only intercept events from a certain path or lower. So in the, by default, the path is taken from where the script lives. So you normally put your service worker script at the root level of your site. Even if you normally put your scripts in a script folder, this one should be separate. And because it's going to run in a separate process, you're not going to combine and minify it into your other scripts. It is a separate piece. But I can specify this at the top level, but say I don't really want everything under slash. I only want things under app to be controlled by service worker. So I can scope it down. Now, the, the current spec says one service worker per web app. In Chrome, experimentally, you can have multiple service workers per app. But since the coordination details and it's all being, are being worked out, it's being finalized, that's not technically production ready code. That's something that's still being hashed out in the spec. So inside the service worker now, notice the service worker.js badge in the corner. We'll call self.addEventListener. So this adds an event listener to the service worker. Self is a reserved keyword, is actually a keyword in JavaScript that we're finally using. If it's called from the outside the service worker, outside of a worker, it means window. If it's called from inside of a worker, it means the worker. So on the so self on the web worker, add event listener, install, and so do things during the installation process. That's normally where you would build a cache. The activate event happens when the service worker actually takes control. In which case, do stuff during activate. Normally what we'll do during activate is this. So I built my first service worker, I bring it up. It runs. <clears throat> now I revise it, so I have version two. Version two builds its own cache. So I have two caches sitting on the disk. During activate, version two knows that it's the only service worker in control now. So it can actually remove its version one cache. So cache maintenance normally happens during activate. Do not do cache maintenance during install because there may be more than one service worker depending on that cache, also because Chrome doesn't like it. If you take the cache out during install, some versions of Chrome will crash. They shouldn't, but let's be, you know, just stick to the rules and we'll be fine. So events that you get. Install, activate. Okay, you've seen those. Message. If you call post message to send a message to a web worker or a service worker, it gets the message event. Message event is how you communicate between the service worker and your main code um, using a push message command. Push. Um, or post message, sorry. Can you auto purge the cache? The, the, the answer is both yes and no. Um, so the answer is officially no because service worker is entirely controlled by code that you supply. But the answer is partially yes because there's an open source library called SW Toolbox that Google published. And one of the things that it does is it has that management code in it. So what most people will do is use SW Toolbox and let us write the code for you. So we'll look at that later, I promise. 
So functional events. Every time a <coughs> network request happens, you get a fetch event. You can also get a sync event if you've enabled background sync. Back, so sync events can happen even when the rest of your app is shut down, middle of the night or whatever. The web worker can get a sync event from the browser and it might go out and actually update data, load the database, load the cache, all without waking up your app. And then push is obviously used if you get a push message. So with the sync event, the client initiates the connection like all, like all web activities. The client's always the initiator. Like any other code, right, misuse of sync can drain the battery. Um, on the other hand, if your data rates vary based on time of day, it can be good for doing like updates when the data is cheaper. So like any other thing, you have to be uh, good about how you use it. So here's an example fetch handler. So in this case, we're going to catch the fetch event and call event.respond with, go to the caches and see if anything matches my event request. And if it does, I'll get the event response and return that. So if I've got it in the cache, now what happens if something doesn't match? I get a null and I return that. Browser says, uh, I don't have that file. Or, <clears throat> oh, I don't have it here. Or what you could do is you could say caches match event request or and just do a fetch on the network. If you do a fetch from inside the service worker, it does not recursively re-enter. It goes out to the network. So here's an example of background sync. This is a one-off. So I register the service worker later on. I get the registration. I wait for it to be ready, which gives me the registration. And then I call sync and register with this tag foo. It'll do a one-time sync request. Or you can schedule them. And then a sync event that comes in has an event tag on it so you can tell different events apart. <clears throat> and you can do something with it. Now, here's something new, event.waitUntil. You haven't seen this yet. Remember that I said that the service worker can be shut down when it's idle? You don't want it to shut down right in the middle of this function. So event.waitUntil called around a block of asynchronous code, basically wait makes the service worker stay awake until that promise is resolved. So it keeps it from going to sleep on you. Okay, so listening to push, you get a push event, you call show notification, which puts a notice on the screen, and you do a wait until that's complete. Now, there's basic service worker samples at Google Chrome.github.io, but what I really wanted to show you is in the application tab in Chrome, under service workers, you'll see all the service workers that are running. And you may be surprised at how many things are actually already using Service Worker. There's also a couple of really important checkboxes here. One is offline. If you need to simulate being offline, just check that. And now you can test offline behaviors. There's update on reload. So remember that I said that with Service Worker, you reload, it gets active. Now, if I reload again, and the control script hasn't changed for the service worker, the old service worker will be used. Well, maybe I want to force a new one to come in. So update on reload forces a new service worker every time you reload the page. And bypass for network basically says, <coughs> hey, service worker, don't intercept my fetch events. I'm going straight to the network. So if something seems broken in your service worker, you can hit that switch and go test your code. And if bypass for network, it works, and you uncheck it, and suddenly it stops, well, you know where the bug is. Service workers, by the way, can now be debugged from the Sources tab, just like anything else, which is a really cool thing. Um, the other thing to notice here, uh, let's see, not everything is here. So I can, so if I, service workers stopped, I can restart it right there. I can force an immediate update to a service worker. I can hand it a push or a sync event, or I can force unregister it. You will also see if there's a service worker loaded, an old one that's got control and a new one's waiting to take control, you'll actually see a button here called, or a link called stop waiting, and you can click that to force the new one to take over right now. 
OK, resources. And we're actually not going to wind up doing this particular lab because there's another lab coming that we'll do instead. Um, but actually, first thing we're going to do is lunch. Thank you.